Welcome to Capitol Reef National Park in Utah. This is our 26th day of camping. Well, this is our first night here at Fruta Campground in Capitol Reef. We've just left four nights in Kodachrome and three nights in Bryce where it snowed, it was windy, and we come here and it is amazingly beautiful. The weather is perfect. It was in the 70s today. We're sitting out here in the camper, looking at this fruit orchard, watching all these um, female deer. And you know, I saw someone else's video and they said to get loop C on this side, right where this fruit orchard is. And that's what we did. And this is undoubtedly the best spots in the campground. So this is my afternoon. Lucy and I are sitting here in the chair at the camper. I'm reading my book. And do you see those deer right there at the edge of the apricot orchard? There, there's three of them just lying there looking at Lucy and Lucy's looking at them. What a wonderful afternoon. We have our generator going right now to recharge the battery in our camper. There's no electricity here. I had a feeling I was gonna like this campground, and I really do. I just left our campsite and our restroom facility is right there, that little brown building. But look at these mountains as the sun hits it. It looks like gold. This is the restroom facility. There's no showers, but there's no vault toilet, so that's good. Okay, so behind the restroom is another orchard. This is a chestnut orchard. Fred read that this was an old uh, Mormon camp. It, this, is an this is an historic orchard. All these orchards around here are. And the Mormons planted these, probably in the 1800s. This is loop C, it's a very small loop. So as I'm coming back from the restroom, I see Fred in the road talking to this man. I told you, he strikes up conversations with everybody. It's pretty funny. That guy was saying that his wife's brother coached for University of Florida football team. Okay. Look at that little baby, that little fuzzy baby. We had to get up really early this morning so we could reserve some tours on um, National Park Service at Mesa Verde and I needed internet so we had to come into town. Um, it is early so we wanted to get some breakfast. This is the only restaurant that we see in town and this is what was recommended at the grocery store. So we had our little breakfast here and it was decent. Check out this old house. So this is the Gifford house. They say to get here at nine o'clock. That's when the pies come out of the oven. Okay. 
Oh. Oh, my quilted pot holders. Oh, look at that. Strawberry rhubarb. Homemade soaps. Oh, look at these little crocheted dishcloths. Cute. And some embroidered dish towels. Oh, how pretty. I might have to get some of those. So, we're going to go sit here on this little picnic table and try our pie. Fred got some ice cream. <laughs> I got strawberry rhubarb and he got peach. Mmm. Oh, those are delicious. The crust is really good. How much were these pies a piece? Not close to eight dollars, I think. They're very delicious, and the lady said that. The fruit was all fresh. Nothing was canned. It was like flash frozen or something from last season. Taking a little bike ride through the park. These orchards, just amazing. Here is Loop C. Isn't that pretty? Wow, what a great little bike ride. <laughs> Check out this old barn. And there's some horses behind it. Right here in front of us is the Gifford house. This is Calvin D. Pendolin who arrived at the twilight of the 19th century, built a barn here before World War I. Pretty horses out here. swinging open from the wind. Here, this talks about the Mormons, and it says starting in the 1880s, you know, they built their irrigation systems, um, horse-drawn equipment to plow the fields. So this is the Fremont River that runs through this park. I don't know if you can understand the size of these trees, but look at them. They're huge and beautiful. Look at this tree. Here's another orchard that looks like it's chained off, probably to keep all the deer out. This is called Johnson Orchard. It's a historic orchard, says Mormon pioneers planted thousands of fruit trees in the fertile Fremont River Valley from the 1880s to the 1960s. And these trees provided food and income to the 10 or so families that called this area home. It says they have apricots, 
apples, cherries, peaches, pears, and plums. So the scenic drive, I believe, is this way. I think we're going to do that this afternoon. This is the entrance to Loop C. I do think that Loop C gives you the most access to these orchards. Hello. The campground host. And there's our truck. Well, Lucy and I are going for a walk in this apricot orchard that is next to our campsite. We really can't go too far right now because the wind is blowing hard and our campground pad is asphalt. We couldn't stake our tent down that well. And with this wind, we have to stay close by to make sure we don't have trouble at our campsite. Hopefully the wind will die down soon. But it's nice going through this little orchard. Oh, there are several ditches cut through here. Irrigation ditches. Look at this. Wow, that's some seriously flowing water for irrigation. Look at Lucy trying to get over. Lucy, can you get over? Let's go, Lucy. Can you jump? <laughs> Look at that. Good girl. Oh, this is where the deer were lying down yesterday comfortable little beds for them and a pretty orchard how beautiful so we walked to the edge of the orchard Lucy come this way how pretty this is I wish it wasn't so windy Lucy's having a good time running through all this grass. She's a Jack Russell and she, she will find any kind of little critter there is. What is she after? Lucy, what is that? Jesus. Come on. I have no idea what she's... Look at her. That's a Jack Russell. Lucy, come on. Lucy, come on. Let's go. Jump. Lucy, come. It was a nice little walk through an apricot orchard. So these little birds that have the gold chest, it looks like they stay in the ground a lot. And they're all over the place here. They're so cute. I don't know what kind of birds they are. I'm definitely going to have to look this up. Here they are. I did learn that the little birds with the orange chest those are robins. And right over here, I don't know if you can see it, this is how they irrigate all these orchards. So the water that you hear is actually coming from the Fremont River. So they divert the water in a holding pond that's, that's close up in these hills. And the water is gravity flowed through that pipe and it irrigates all the um, orchards in this park. The guy from National uh, Park Service was there a few minutes ago and was telling me all about it. And these workmen that you see right down here, they're making a new trail and it's supposed to be ADA accessible. So I think that might be the only ADA trail in the park. Look, here's one of these birds. See it coming up? They're all over the place, and that's a robin. So we're at the visitor center, a large orchard right across the street. Hi, 
clearly. Wow, pretty spectacular. Look at the blue rock over there. Oh, this is a beautiful spot. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. I'd just like to sit down here and spend some time on this warm rock, soaking up the sun. Very nice. It is, isn't it? Sure is. This is the old Fruta Historic Schoolhouse. There was no electricity or indoor plumbing, but Fruta was beautiful. Across the dusty road were row upon row of grapes bordered by huge walnut trees. On moonlit night, the majestic red cliffs seemed gentle and protective. The school building was sadly in need of repair and mud was falling from between the logs. We had only a few. The last class was taught here in 1941. <laughs> wow. So in 1941, this schoolhouse was active. But you can see in the windows. My name is Janice O'Roy Torgerson, and I taught here in 1934 as a brand new teacher. I was a native of Wayne County, but Fruta was a rough 25 mile drive from my parents' home in Lyman. That's a cute picture. Look at the view that they had. There's the orchards right there. Large orchards over here. So it says from 300 to 1300 CE, ancestors of the Hopi tribe, Pueblo, um, made this red rock oasis their home.
Oh, this is the blacksmith shop. For much of that time, we had no running water, electricity, or telephone. There was little cash to be had from farming, so I had to be away when I was young. I worked on a state road, very cheap, and ran cattle in the South Desert. But the most pleasant memories I have were those of family, farming, and friends here in Philly. Until 1940, we used all teams and horse-drawn implements mostly for growing and cutting out alfalfa for animal feed. The orchard, of course, took a lot of work, but we had a beautiful fruit. Apricots, peaches, pears, apples. Visitors just stroll through the orchard. Hey, I wonder if this is what they would tie their oxen to. They said this would be the seat, the wagon would be behind it, and they would tie their oxen up right here. So the blacksmith said that his children attended that one room school that we just saw. And they all had to be very self-sufficient out here. So across the street is the Ripple Rock Nature Center and today at three o'clock they're gonna have a little geology class over there. So we're doing the Capitol Reef Scenic Drive and there is a little fee station here. So this is the end of this 20 mile scenic drive. It's 10 miles in, 10 miles back. Quite a spectacular ending. Well, this is night three in Capitol Reef. This is our last night before we move on tomorrow towards Canyonlands. Maybe um, Goblin Valley State Park and tonight we're having these fried potatoes and onions on the Blackstone and when those are done we've got little petite sirloin steaks we're gonna cook. So we put the potatoes under here so they'll get nice and soft. And Fred just opened up a nice cold beer that's been in the cooler. You know a person might wonder what are we doing with four steaks when there's just two of us? Well, we've got two little dogs that are going to have a very good night. Well, here's our completed meal. Yummy, yummy. We're hungry. 
we are all packed up and getting ready to head towards canyon lands and just something to remember um, you know there's no internet out here at all and yes we do have road maps but you know before we left we charted our course and we printed out um, you know single sheet um, instruction maps such as this one which we definitely needed it this morning we really enjoyed Capitol Reef it's a beautiful little campground if you can get inside fruit to campground um, that's that's definitely the place to be in this area for Capitol Reef one thing before we leave Capitol Reef we didn't know this but as you head down 24 just past the petroglyph panel there's something called a Hickman natural bridge and there was a lot of people there I bet it's something pretty cool but we didn't know about it so you might want to look that up if you're headed this way it's just past the petroglyphs, not even five minutes past. And just a little bit further down is something called Grand Wash. There were a lot of cars parked there. I'm wondering if that might be a slot canyon. This is a very pretty drive, Capitol Reef towards Canyonlands. There, there's a lot of stuff on this road, 24, seems like. So on 24, we were able to stop here it's called Bahunan Cabin. It looks pretty neat. The modest home before you stands as a reminder of the hardships of early settlers. The desire to exercise religious freedom and create new self-sufficient communities ultimately led the many Mormon settlers to this remote part of Utah. This one-room cabin was built in 1882 by um, Elijah Bahunan and his family. They were some of the earliest pioneers to attempt to establish homesteads in the Capitol Reef area. Wow, look at that. This was their house. My gosh. And I guess this is the original place for it. Look where they chose to, um, to build. You know, they're sheltered from the wind here somewhat. Look across the street, still more shelter. And then they could get out right there. Oh, this is a very nice location. But look at this. Let's see. Oh my gosh, you can see a fireplace, dirt floor, one room. See the fireplace? Wow. Look at that. A door. Mormons. Wonder how many wives he had in here. <laughs> Good Lord. I thought the Mormons were big on a lot of wives and a lot of kids. Wow. Very interesting. I do know that Goblin Valley State Park is on the way. We're actually going to stop there on the way to Canyonlands. If they have a place for us, we'll stay one night at Goblin Valley. If not, we're head on to Canyonlands.